Or I'd just like to thank uh, the commissioner for being here and Regio Cruz for me. I'm a native San Francisco born and raised here, and I've got to say that for me it was a huge uh, thing to have Regio Cruz as the chief of staff uh, for the former mayor. I, for, to see a Latino in the, such a high ranking position, and it's the thing that I die for. So it's really, uh, I think, a very appropriate to have both Emilio and Maya here. Uh, obviously, you're swearing in. I want to congratulate the officers. Uh, and thank you for serving because it is a huge task and I know you all will rise to the occasion. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So I just want to thank you all for being here. I'll say a couple of things and then everyone, if everyone can say just a couple of words. I'm really happy to be serving as president of LDC. Um, I know that we've been through a lot of challenges in the city over the past uh, couple few years, I think, and um, we really are gathering, or most of us, I think our goal is to see more Latinos empowered, otherwise we wouldn't be in the Latino Democratic Club, and I think that although we have a fairly decent percentage of residents who are Latinos in San Francisco, we are not necessarily where we need to be as far as political power is concerned. So uh, I know we don't have anyone on the school board. You know, it would be great to see a Latina on the Board of Supervisors, I think, at some point. Um, and there's just a lot of places, commissions, and just a lot of other places where I think it would be really wonderful to see more Latinos present, women and men. So uh, that being said, I, I want to, I hope that we do a lot of like voter registration, because a lot of this work is just kind of nuts and bolts, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think we just have to get go on the ground, you know, go out to the different neighborhoods. And what we plan to do is for the next, at least until June, we have reserved 518 Valencia as our meeting place. So it's going to be there the third Wednesday of every month at 6.30. And uh, we're trying to get panels to each uh, month. So next month, for instance, we're going to have a panel on, you know, where Latino voting power uh, patterns, where do we live, how do we vote, the different districts. We want to get down to the really nuts and bolts. And then a few of us might be forming a, a, a separate group, which I shouldn't talk about, but I will. <laughs> a separate women's uh, organization. And uh, Liliana Lopez is a member, Tammy Bryant and others, and Laurel Muniz is here. So, and we plan to have a panel next month. Um, and Nadia is also a founding member. So we're really kind of a, just a group of us that are putting the bylaws together and stuff, but we want to uh, we think that women, Latino women, have also been disempowered over the past few uh, years and few months. So we feel that we need to put out a different narrative as, as far as a Latina women's voice is concerned, although we want it to, we don't want to limit it to just Latinas. Uh, so that being said, I'm really happy to be here among friends. Happy to see Sheriff Ross Mercurini and thank him for having that wonderful dance with the uh, folks that were in the <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> and Mara, welcome and congratulations on your birthday. We're not going to let you leave. Emilio, yeah. thank you for being here. God bless you. And congratulations also. We're happy to have you there. And, uh, we'll just, you know, I, I tend to be very progressive, but I, I listen to all sides contrary to uh, popular opinion. <laughs> so, uh, I just want to make sure that this is about Latino empowerment first, but that we also share certain common values around equity and fairness and uh, compassion and uh, all those important values that we have. So, because identity politics sometimes it gets locked in in a way where it becomes too much about identity and not enough about values. So, I think we need to always keep those things in mind, especially when it relates to equity, compassion, as I mentioned before. That being said, I guess we'll start with Hi, the ladies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're Hi, second, Brian, so, This is a very spontaneous speech. Anyway, thank you for everybody for coming. It's so exciting to be here. And I will say that uh, even though I just was sore in as a secretary, for me it's an honor to be a member. 
So I want to extend the, the invitation to everybody who wants to become a member. With, uh, you know, Oscar Grande is a membership person. So everybody's super welcome to be, become a member. And also um, have all the information that the previous secretary, Nadia Corbett, gave me. I have my binder. I'm ready for our next planning meeting. And I'm super ready to be part of the process. And I'm very excited that uh, we Latinos are empowering <coughs> ourselves and also empowering others. This is very important. That we only we don't only stay with the power, that we also empower other people. So thank you very much and I'm very looking forward for the next year. I'm very happy. Thank you. I'm pretty honored to be part of this uh, board. Uh, and I will try my best to help the Hispanic community because I think we need help in so many different areas, especially the kids with education. That's what I have. This is sort of a full circle for me. Um, I'm here in a supportive role uh, for Christina and for the board members, as I'm the Vice President of Communications. But with that, um, from, from my point of view, there's a good opportunity to really enhance the concept that Christina mentioned a while ago about diversity and fairness and equity. Uh, I'm on our community and particularly, and how do you build a, a pipeline of professionals to participate and be considered both in the business community and also for city, state, and federal appointments. Uh, something that I'm very familiar with. And so I'm looking forward to this, for this opportunity because I think there's a, a wealth of richness of talent uh, here in San Francisco. And um, uh, it's fun to be now in a very strong supportive role for all of my colleagues here. So I welcome the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the Department of the Environment, one of the first time in a long time that we've had a community-based person, Latino, uh, really have our voice at the table of the Department of the Environment. So welcome, Joshua. Thank you. For so I guess I'm the next batter up. Um, hi, Mike Alonso, Vice President of Political Affairs. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming and being here. I want to also thank you guys for electing everyone here to these honored positions. <coughs> being Vice President of Political Affairs, basically what that means is that I have to analyze Latino political power in the city. And I'm not going to mix words with you. We don't have much. We're the second largest minority group, and we're barely a blip on the radar. In fact, I even remember once someone telling me that our community are considered pigeons because they'll throw the crumbs and watch us climb all over each other, fight each other. That's always been our problem. That's why we have nothing. That's right. And so now I come from the progressive wing. But I have a lot of friends from the moderate wing, and let me tell you something, progressive moderate is completely insignificant at this point. Our problem is unity. Now a lot of folks talk about unity, and they'll talk about it for maybe a good 10 minutes here and there. But the fact of the matter is, we've rarely ever been unified. Maybe on a few national issues, but locally, we're still fighting each other. What makes this any different between the Norteños and the Sereños outside these walls when they fight each other? It's kind of hard for me to tell them to be united when we're fighting each other. That makes us hypocrites. And call me a hopeless romantic, but I don't want another generation of young Latinos being raised by social workers. So I'm going to put it out like this. From here on out, we're going to have to ask ourselves one fundamental question. Is what we're doing right now for the better of the community, or is it for the betterment of ourselves? I'm not interested in personal agendas. I'm not interested in personal trips. Because right now, right now, we need community. We don't need climbers. You know, you know, we need people power. We don't need politicians. We need leaders, not liaisons. That's what we need. So as far as I'm concerned, here on out, 
Every one of you is my brother and sister. And I'll back you up to the fullest. The same way I will back up, and I'm proud to back up, my president, Christina Olave. Because it's about time that Latina leadership, strong Latina leadership, a woman that's not afraid to speak her mind, <laughs> is at the front of not just this organization, but of our community. And God help anyone who gets in our way. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Very good. Um, hard to follow that one. Though. <laughs> 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 I'm the uh, vice president of members. I wrote it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think what Mike said is just one of the reasons why I, I became a member of this club. Um, and and one of the reasons why, you know, my focus is around membership. And I foresee and I see vision next year we're going to double the number in this room. I want this to be a vehicle, I envision a vehicle for, for young people to come and develop their leadership. That this is a leadership development pipeline to not only not only for, for appointed seats and commissioned seats, but to be organizers in our community. I'm an organizer. Like, like Jim, I was born and raised here, Celsius District. Um, and I've seen things change. I've seen the good I've seen, you know, I, I've seen my, my family is a union family. You know, the reason why I'm still here and the reason why I'm raising four little ones in, in the most expensive city in the U.S. Um, and I see this as a place similar to mine. And why I, I'm committing to this group, why I'm committing to you all, is, is not for that name recognition or as a, as, a, as a vehicle to climb. It's a vehicle to build. And really build this, this, this club. <coughs> Bring in new faces. Begin to translate all our materials. Begin to have our meetings bilingual, Spanish and English. Making sure that this is a place not only for native born for people that are being for you, but for the same thing that I'm That this is your club. That this is the voice of your club. movement to really push those issues that matter most to immigrants, to Latinos, Latinas, to young people, to elders. That this is a place, but that it's connected. That it's just not about our world in and of itself, but it's also connected to what's happening on the streets, what's happening uh, in the community. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You all bring a wealth of experience. It's one of the reasons why I came to this club, to be able to sit in the same room with business owners, with local merchants, with young people, with you know, politicians. So, can, so we can get a full spectrum of the richness of the skills and abilities we bring. So let's put that to work. Let's get to work. Manos a la obra. You guys down? You want to do that back and just head around to follow, you know? I guess, it, you know, it was requested that we read the mission statement, so I'll ask the question. And then we'll meet and socialize and VP of Communications? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Edward James almost voiced them. Where is The goals yeah. and objectives. <laughs> I can marry you, Freddie Prince. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Working to empower Latinos. Here's our mission statement The goals and objectives of the LDC are to promote and encourage Latino candidates to empower the Latino community in the areas of immigration and social justice. Issues such as economic development for Latino jobs, businesses, for the quality of life issues relative to violence prevention, which is quite uh, appropriate in this stage and age, youth and education. In addition, support other candidates that will advocate and promote issues and legislation that further Latino agenda to actively motivate Latinos to understand the issues, to vote, and to get involved through advocacy. 